Welcome back to Who Chose. Now, I've been called crazy before, like a lot. More than I've been called sane. But some of you viewers with an eagle eye may have noticed something. That's a pumpkin. He's growing pumpkins again. Nah. That's right. Pumpkins in an NFT system. Not this one, though. I've just been using this system as a nursery of sorts for these pumpkins until I was able to build what we're building today. And that is a dedicated pumpkin NFT system. Now, I, like many other people, am my own worst enemy. These pumpkins were actually the seeds that I raised in seed raising mix uh, to show you uh, within the seed raising videos that I made. Uh, and I said in those videos, the reason we raise seeds in an inert medium is so that we don't get contamination in our NFT system. And have a look at this. This is me not taking my own advice and introducing algal bloom into my system. Um, I may need to clean this rail again after I've taken them out because, you know, it's there's a lot of algae in there. It's not like... That's not what you want. Algae can cause toxins within the system um, which kill off other forms of plant life. So, anyway, let's get to the build. So, because I love punishing myself, we're going to revisit this system. Now, if you haven't seen this video, it's just a failure that I had a couple of videos ago. And I'm going to adapt it into a 100 mil pumpkin NFT rail system. So, Obviously, you'll need some 100 mil PVC piping. Now, the problem that I encountered when I was uh, looking for T pieces for 100 mil piping, at least at the hardware store that I was at, uh, is that the T pieces are 88 degrees, so they don't make a perfect 90 degree T. Um, the way that I'm going to deal with that is um, I just have an 88 degree uh, end piece. And I'm going to have all of the channels on a slight angle. Uh, hopefully that works out in the end. Um, I've got end caps and a 90 millimeter converter so that I don't have to, you know, buy all these extra bits that I've already got. I'll also be using some hole saws and an impact driver. The impact driver is mainly just to get all of this crap off. Um, but I will be using it uh, to secure the pipes. Uh, in a method that I haven't yet thought of. Probably going to cut some pieces off these and use them as used to hold the pipes in place. Anyway, let's get started. Now, I actually did test this system out and uh, it worked, uh, except for the fact that it didn't. Uh, the water actually diverted away from a couple of my plants and almost killed them before I saw that they wilted and quickly rushed them into the other system. So I immediately turned it off and relegated this to the junk pile. <laughs> ah, the junk pile of failed experiments. <laughs> Let's never speak of this again. Now, the reason I'm using 100 mil pipes is because I want to give them that extra 10 millimeters of room to play with. Now, 10 millimeters might not seem like much uh, when you're talking uh, area, but when it comes to diameter, it actually gives you like a lot of extra root space. Uh, and the fact that this will be one plant per rail will mean that uh, I won't have to deal with um, multiple layers of roots piling up on each other uh, and causing blockage, hopefully. Anyway, we'll find that out later. <laughs> 
Now I'm just going to connect up all the pipes, make sure that uh, it all fits together properly before I go installing them permanently. Now I've left one of my pipes free because I'm going to actually use this as um, the joiners for the, the bottom row. You also need a reciprocating saw. And I'm letting you know now, because I'm really, really bad at pre-planning the tools you'll need in videos. <laughs> I'll take this point to also tell you that these pipes are all two meters long. You can make them as long as you like. I just feel like two meters is the appropriate length. And uh, if the roots get too long and start heading down, I can always just cut them off at the bottom. The spacing that you cut this pipe at will determine the row spacing. So you need to pre-plan uh, the distance between the T pieces uh, to give you the amount of row spacing that you require for whatever plant you're gonna put in this system. So you know those things that just go off without a hitch? <laughs> this is one of them, which is fantastic considering what was here. <laughs> so now I'm just gonna add end caps to the ends of all the pipes. Now to hold all of the channels in place, uh, not that I think that they need to be held in place because like the weight of the system itself will hold it down, but uh, to stop them sliding around, say I knock them or something. I'm just going to cut some um, slices of pipe and then cut them in half and screw them down into uh, the wood on the frame. And that'll just stop the pipe sliding around. So all our NFT channels are in place and they're held in by our little holders. So now I'm going to drill in the holes that you put the plants in uh, and I'm going to do it in a pattern. Now, because I'm going to have one pumpkin vine in each channel, I'm going to space them uh, in, a, I guess, a diagonal or a zigzag. I'm going to have because uh, I want them as close to the inlets as possible. So I'm going to have three, uh, the outsides in the middle, at the top. And I'm going to have two spaced, oh, probably an arm's length down the channel. Very specific. But it's an arm's length down the channel. Um, just to give them, you know, some room to breathe until uh, they find their way out across and hopefully take over my whole yard with lots of pumpkins and leaves, but mostly pumpkins, the fruits, not just the leaves. All right, drill some holes. So now I'm just gonna drill in the holes for the four millimeter tubing. This thing is almost like a raft. A raft. Leave a comment if you want to see me make a raft. <laughs> who chose raft? A who chose raft? And a, hydro a hydroponic raft system. Oh, hang on. That exists. Oh no. Ugh. All right, all of the uh, puck holes are in, all of the inlet holes are in. Now we just need to tube up the ends. Now, this isn't going to work. Uh, I'm going to have to redo this. So you get to skip that part. All right, now I've got all but one channel plumbed in because um, I never did end up getting the extra barbs. But that's okay, I can get them later. Um, so, now we can turn it on and see how 
the system holds water. Yep, <laughs> it's running. Yep. And there doesn't seem to be any leaks in the system. I've never had a system turn on and not have any leaks. Cool. This is just one of those effortless builds. All right. So I realized that the reservoir that I've got at the moment won't be enough. Like uh, at the height of my pumpkins in the light, in the last system, in the other system, um, I was running through like 50 liters of water a day. So a hundred liter uh, reservoir is just not going to cut it, but it's what I've got for now and I'll use it uh, and I'll just upgrade it as I require. All right, let's get the pumpkins in the system. Yes. So all of the plants in the system are doing really well at the moment. They're loving the winter sun and the beans are just exploding. Like I've never seen plant growth like the shooting up of a bean uh, tendril looking for more space. Anyway, let's get these pumpkins out and I'll show you the warning signs that they're giving me about being in this system. Uh, now you'll see the algal bloom that's you know accumulated around the roots of these from where I've introduced them. Um, but this, <laughs> like they're gonna get massive. Those roots, they're gonna be monsters. And I want them to be monsters because more roots, more fruits. <laughs> Let's get these in the system. All right, I'm just going to feed this root straight down. I might need to take the end cup off to give myself a little bit of a helping hand. But... All right. So as you can see, I've done my best to get most of those roots down into that nutrient film. And they should spread out and fill that channel. All right, next. Nice. So you can actually see where the original root stock was, and that's where all that algae has come from. That was in a seed raising mix. I can't believe it was in a seed raising mix. That's just, anyway, see how white those roots are? They're real healthy. <laughs> I'm actually, look at that. So impressed. <laughs> Might move the puck up a little bit just because it is a bit deeper of a channel. Throw it in there. There we go. And another. <laughs> oh, it never gets old. So just looking at these pumpkins, I'm probably going to end up putting some kind of support between these posts. Um, maybe some dog wire and then have it coming down the sides. I'm not limiting my access to the reservoir, uh, just so that they have something to climb down because they are, you know, a climbing vine. Anyway. Now, um, I didn't plan this. I actually have the perfect amount of pumpkins once I eventually um, add the extra, well, make the extra rail. Whoa. <laughs> uh.
And there you have it. A fully operational pumpkin NFT system. Yes. I can't wait for the pumpkins to explode out of control again and cause all kinds of problems. But this is the reality we live in. I'm really glad that I was able to use uh, some, at least some of the failure build that I had there. Um, anyway, exciting news, guys. I've now got merch. So there's more than just Patreon to support the channel. Links in the description to either Redbubble or Teespring. And I've got a heap of designs on t-shirts and hoodies and stuff. And depending on your location, one of those will be cheaper uh, for shipping and whatnot. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Who Chose. I'll see you next time.